This is what's on my MacBook Pro in 2025. In the last video, I talked about my productivity workstation, but in this video, I thought I would share what's actually on my MacBook, especially as someone who works all day at the computer. I've tested and used a lot of different apps that have helped improve my productivity and my life. So in this video, I thought I would share eight of them. I've made sure that none of these apps require a subscription to use, and if they are paid, they are a one-time payment. Even the sponsor of this video is not a subscription-based app. These are all super useful quality of life improvements that I use every day on my computer. All right, so the first app is something I wish someone told me sooner, and it's something I think that they should have built in to Mac OS. But you know how sometimes you come across a screenshot of some text or maybe some text in a different language that you want to translate or copy? What this app allows you to do is essentially that. It's called Text Sniper, and let me show you an example. So you just hit Command Shift 2 on the computer, then you can just highlight anything on your computer and it will copy it to your clipboard. So this also works for websites where they block you from copying and pasting. So a lot of news websites, uh, they do that. If I had a block of text right here that you wanted to copy and paste and search or you want to save somewhere, you can just hit Command Shift 2, highlight this, and it will copy it to your clipboard. This is an app that makes total sense to have on your computer and once I install this, I use this all the time, especially as somebody who's actively studying Japanese. A lot of times I'll come across a word in a TV show that I don't know how to type, or I want to copy some text from a screenshot. This makes it really easy to look stuff up. So highly recommend this app called Text Sniper. But another app that also feels like it should be built into Mac OS is the next app, which is called Rectangle. So this is actually an open source app, and so it's completely free. And what this app allows you to do is that you can use your keyboard to manage your window. So I can move them to the left and right. And this is really useful when you have a lot of things on your computer. For example, if you have your to-do list or you have your calendar and you want to be able to manage it really easily. And this is really useful because you don't really want to be dragging windows around and you can just use some keyboard shortcuts and snap to the left and it makes it a lot more organized to use Mac OS. Once you install this app, you can also enable hotspots. So if you do want to drag the window, you can drag it to the top to make it full screen. You can drag it to the left to make it to the right. This is actually something that's built into iPad OS and even Windows computers. So it's surprising that it's not fully integrated into Mac OS yet. Personally, I use it just to manage my windows into the left and right halves, but there are a lot of presets that you can set. For example, if you want it to be almost maximized so you can still see your wallpaper, or if you have a bigger monitor or maybe you do programming and you want multiple windows, uh, it's also useful because you can put them into the different corners really easily. One way that I've taken this app further is that I've also remapped those same keyboard shortcuts to the mouse that I use. So I briefly talked about this in a different video, but I didn't show it. The mouse that I use is the MX Master. And the reason why I like the MX Master is because you can remap up to 25 keyboard shortcuts just on the mouse. So I've remapped this so that if I hold on this button and select the left, then it'll snap the window to the left or right or maximize. And this really helps improve the workflow on the computer. If you're using the mouse, you don't want to switch to the keyboard. And if you're using the keyboard, you don't want to unnecessarily switch to the mouse. So I would recommend setting something like that up if your mouse supports it. There are a lot of ways that you can probably imagine of how you might want to use this. For example, if you read books on a computer, you might want to have your book on one side and your Obsidian or your Apple Notes on the other and you can easily take notes like that. Uh, this app Rectangle, it's completely free and it's helped me stay super organized. So far, these two apps have felt like a pretty natural upgrade to anyone that uses Mac OS, but the next app has been a pretty insane upgrade to how I use the computer. Through using this, I've been able to 3X my typing speed. And it's with this app called Super Whisper, who's also kindly sponsoring this video. So for most people that use a computer, you can probably type 100 words per minute, or if you're super fast, maybe 180 words per minute. But if you speak, you can actually speak at up to 250 words per minute with no issues. The rate that you think is probably even faster than that. So when you type, you're really limited by the speed at which you can get your ideas onto your computer. So Super Whisper is a AI powered dictation app. And the difference between an AI powered dictation app versus the built-in dictation on Mac OS is that First, it's way more accurate and it's super fast. Let me show you how it works. So for example, right now I have Obsidian open to type some text and I just hit a keyboard shortcut which I've remapped to Command Y. And then now I can say anything I want and when I'm done, I'll just hit Command Y again. And you can see it transcribed everything instantaneously. And it works for pretty much any language. They have a bunch of different models available including ChatGPT models, Claude models, and their own models. For me, most of the time, I'm just using the local model so nothing gets sent to their servers. Where this is most useful is for things like writing emails, responding to messages, or taking extended notes 
through your voice. Through the custom modes on Super Whisper, you can have a custom prompt if you want to clean up what you're saying, if you want to format the things that you're saying. Sometimes what I do is if I have a call and after the call, I want to write down some of the important things, I'll just use Super Whisper to ramble through some of the key ideas and it will make it all organized for me. You can probably think of other things that is useful for your specific workflow. One really cool thing about Super Whisper is that you don't have to talk in a slow speed and you don't even have to talk clearly. You can even whisper, hence the name, and it'll pick up everything with 99% accuracy. How I found out about Super Whisper is because it was recommended by Andre Karpathy, who's one of the early founding members of OpenAI. And he talked about it in his video on his AI workflow. Compared to other AI dictation apps, I think this is easily the best one because of speed and also because of the fact that you don't need to pay a subscription fee. And so Super Whisper is a one-time payment for lifetime access. And that's even with you using OpenAI or Claude models for transcription. I was actually able to get on a call with the founder and I really like what he's doing with the app. I've been using this app for almost a year and I even talked about it in another video completely unsponsored. So I genuinely think it's a really useful app. And if you regularly do anything like writing emails, responding to messages, or even taking notes, this is something that has been really useful for me. For long form writing, it's probably still better to use your keyboard because you can spend more time thinking and structuring things better. But for things like responding to messages or even writing down your to-dos, I love using Super Whisper. So yeah, highly suggest you check it out. You can use the link right here and in the description so that they know that I sent you and you can get 30% off. And that leads me to the next app, which is the to-do app that I use. So if you're a member that supports the channel, then you've probably already seen the video that I made about this before. But the main to-do app that I've been using for a long time now has been Things 3. Things 3 is a super powerful and minimal to-do app. It's actually won the Apple Design Awards before. And if you go to any Apple store, it's actually installed by default onto their devices. The reason why I like Things 3 is because there's zero bloat, it just works, and also it's a one-time payment. To show you how I use it, all I do is I hit Alt Space, and then I can add a to-do from anywhere on my computer, and I can add when it's due, or I can add it to a project. This has been super useful in capturing any ideas, even writing down books to read and movies to watch, I use Things 3. If you have other Apple devices like an Apple Watch, you can also add to-dos from there and it syncs instantly. Things 3 can really be as simple or complex as you like. So if you wanna keep it simple, you can just have a master list of to-dos and you assign them to different due dates, or you can create different projects, even different areas. Like for example, you can have one for school, one for work, and you can have different projects and to-dos within those. It's also really easy to make recurring events. So for example, like paying your taxes on certain days or you have to file certain things like every single year, it's really useful to have an app that will remind you to do that every year at the same time. But yeah, I've yet to find a better to-do app and I don't think I'll be changing or switching anytime soon. The next app helps me waste way less time on the computer and it's this app called Cold Turkey. What it lets you do is it lets you block certain websites, certain parts of websites, certain apps, or even your entire computer. So for me, because I really value my attention, there are certain apps that I just block entirely and certain apps that I block on a schedule. And this really helps me save time in not getting to certain rabbit holes or getting onto websites that I don't want to ever visit, like spam websites, uh, tabloid news, or even stuff like corn. And uh, those websites might be different for you, but I've been using this app for so long and a similar app on my phone for so long that I can't really imagine using a completely unlocked device with no boundaries and no constraints added. I think using an app like this also helps you build more discipline. One thing this app helped me a lot before was during COVID, I would stay up all night, like going down different rabbit holes and going to bed at like 5 a.m. And so I made it so once it was past 9 p.m. or past midnight, it would completely lock me out of my computer and that really helped me have a healthy sleep schedule. The same developer has a few different apps that are really useful for productivity that I would also recommend that you check out. So one of them is called Cold Turkey Writer and what that does is it makes your entire computer into a, a text editor and you cannot exit the app until you reach your typing goal. I've made a few videos before about how I reduce my screen time, but overall I think it's really important to have constraints when it comes to using social media because it's really an endless rabbit hole and there's infinite amount of valuable content and infinite amount of entertaining content. So another app that helps me have a better relationship with social media and social media websites is this browser extension called Untrap for YouTube and also Social Focus. 
So this browser extension works on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, and it also works on your mobile phone. So what this extension allows you to do is it allows you to customize what websites like YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter look like on your phone and computer. You can remove the algorithmic feed so it only shows you your subscriptions or people that you're following, or you can remove metrics like likes, views. I think this was definitely the biggest game changer for improving social media usage and reducing my screen time by making these apps less addicting rather than blocking them out entirely. In my opinion, social media, when used in moderation and with constraints, has incredible upside and very little downside. There's so many times when I come across content that has inspired me, that has educated me, or has even changed my life completely. And so I realized that I don't want to block out social media entirely or completely quit using social media because it's still a great way to share content, to find good content, and even connect with family and friends. So yeah, I highly recommend checking out Social Focus and Untrap for YouTube. They're two different extensions. One is specifically for YouTube and the other is for most social media websites. The next app helped me streamline all of my messaging apps into one. It's with this app called Beeper. So if you ever have the issue where you have multiple messaging apps to contact different people, like for example, you might have Instagram DMs, Messenger, Telegram, WhatsApp, Slack, it's always been really overwhelming for me to have a bunch of different apps and a bunch of different notifications from different apps. And what Beeper allows you to do is it allows you to log into those apps locally on your computer and get all of those notifications in one place and respond to everyone in one place. For most of these apps, the authentication is done locally on your computer. So your messages aren't being sent to some server, but they do have that option if you want to sync it across different devices because they also have an iOS app. Yeah, this is basically the only messaging app that I use. And it's really useful to have everything in one app because when I don't want to be reached, I just close this app and then I don't get any messages. So the last app I've been using for maybe 10 years and it's called Alfred. So what this app does is it completely replaces Spotlight on your computer. But the reason why I like Alfred over using the regular Spotlight is because to open folders, to open apps, it's still way faster on Alfred. Also with Alfred, there's a bunch of different apps that you can install directly into that pop-up. So for example, I have one where I can look up a Japanese word just by typing J-I and it'll open up in this dictionary. Another is I, I can set a timer with a message that is across my entire screen. Uh, another shortcut that I have is when I type clear and hit enter, it'll remove all the notifications on the right. See, So this is really useful if you have a bunch of different notifications on the right and you want to clear all of them at once. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. There's also some more open source apps that I didn't talk about in this video, but you can check out the video that I made about quitting subscriptions um, over here. Also, let me know, do you guys prefer these type of videos where I'm sharing more tools and product reviews, or do you also enjoy videos about productivity, journaling, book reviews, that sort of thing? But yeah, let me know, because I've been thinking a lot about YouTube more and thinking about ways I can take this channel to the next level. And I want to experiment more, especially next year uh, as one of my goals. And so let me know what you guys enjoy the most. And I want to make better videos so we can level up together. I'm also still moving, so I don't have a stable background just yet. So yeah, see you in the next video. Let's get it.